In a world of unseen dangers, there are few things more frightening than the thought of a deadly virus spreading uncontrollably. With the potential to cause widespread illness and death, some of the world's most lethal viruses have plagued humanity throughout history. From the Black Death to the modern-day COVID-19 pandemic, these viruses have left a trail of devastation in their wake. Today, we'll explore the most lethal viruses known to man, so prepare yourself for a journey into the heart of darkness as we delve into the deadliest viruses ever to exist. The Marburg Virus The Marburg virus is a highly infectious, often fatal virus that is a part of the same family as the Ebola virus. It was first identified in 1967 during an outbreak in Marburg, Germany, where laboratory workers handling African green monkeys became infected with the virus. Since then, sporadic outbreaks have occurred in Africa, primarily in Uganda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. The Marburg virus disease can occur in anyone who comes into close contact with the virus, particularly those who are in close proximity to infected animals or humans. People at higher risk of contracting the virus include healthcare workers, laboratory staff, and family members or caregivers of infected individuals. The Marburg virus disease occurs primarily in Africa, particularly in Uganda, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and Angola. Outbreaks have been linked to contact with infected fruit bats, monkeys, and other animals. The virus can spread rapidly within communities, particularly in settings where hygiene and infection control practices are inadequate. The initial symptoms of Marburg virus disease include fever, headache, muscle aches and pain, chills, nausea, vomiting, and fatigue. As the disease progresses, it can cause more severe symptoms, such as severe diarrhea, abdominal pain, chest pain, shortness of breath, cough, sore throat, a skin rash, confusion, delirium, seizures, internal bleeding, and shock. In severe cases, the disease can lead to multiple organ failure and death, often within seven to 10 days of symptom onset. The largest recorded outbreak of Marburg virus disease occurred in 2005 in Angola, where the virus caused a total of 374 confirmed cases and 329 deaths. The outbreak started in the northern Uije province and quickly spread to other parts of the country, as well as neighboring countries such as the Democratic Republic of Congo. The outbreak in Angola was particularly challenging to control due to a lack of public awareness about the disease and the inadequate healthcare infrastructure in the affected areas. The virus was also able to spread rapidly within healthcare facilities, putting healthcare workers and other patients at high risk of infection. International aid organizations, including the World Health Organization and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, provided support to the Angolan government to help contain the outbreak. Measures such as isolation and quarantine of infected individuals, contact tracing, and public health education campaigns were implemented to help control the spread of the virus. Although the outbreak was eventually brought under control, it highlighted the need for increased preparedness and response capacity for future outbreaks of Marburg virus disease and other viral diseases with epidemic potential. Currently, there's no licensed vaccine or specific treatment for Marburg virus disease. However, several experimental vaccines and treatments are under development and have shown promising results in preclinical studies and early phase clinical trials. The Marburg virus is considered a potential bioterrorism agent due to its high mortality rate and lack of effective treatments. It's classified as a biosafety level 4 pathogen, meaning it requires maximum containment and specialized laboratory facilities to study and handle. The Hantavirus The Hantavirus is a group of viruses that can cause a rare but serious illness called Hantavirus pulmonary syndrome, or HPS, in humans. Hantaviruses are primarily carried by rodents such as deer mice, cotton rats, and rice rats, and can be transmitted to humans through contact with rodent urine, droppings, or saliva, or by inhaling dust contaminated with rodent excretia. HPS was first recognized in the United States in 1993 when an outbreak occurred in the Four Corners region of the southwestern U.S. Since then, HPS cases have been reported in several other countries, including Canada, South America, and Asia. The risk of HPS is generally low for most people, but certain occupations and activities may increase the risk of exposure. For example, farmers, ranchers, and outdoor recreationalists who spend time in rural or semi-rural areas are at higher risk of exposure to hantavirus-infected rodents. 
People who come into contact with rodent-infested buildings or structures, such as homes or cabins, may also be at risk of infection. Outbreaks of HPS have been reported in several countries, including the United States, Canada, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, and Bolivia. In the United States, most cases of HPS occur in the western and southwestern regions, particularly in the states of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and California. However, hantavirus-infected rodents have been found in many other parts of the country as well. HPS can cause a range of symptoms that can appear suddenly, typically within one to five weeks after exposure to the virus. The early symptoms can be similar to those of the flu and may include fever, muscle aches, headache, dizziness, chills, and abdominal pain. Other symptoms may include nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and cough. As the disease progresses, it can cause shortness of breath and severe respiratory distress. This is due to the virus damaging the blood vessels and small capillaries in the lungs, leading to fluid accumulation and difficulty breathing. HPS can progress rapidly, and in severe cases, it can lead to respiratory failure and death. The mortality rate for HPS can be as high as 40%, depending on the specific hantavirus strain and other factors. It's important to seek medical attention if you develop symptoms of HPS, especially if you've been in an area where hantavirus-infected rodents are present, or if you've had contact with rodent excretia. Early detection and treatment can improve outcomes and reduce the risk of severe complications. If you're diagnosed with HPS, you may require hospitalization and supportive care, such as oxygen therapy and mechanical ventilation to manage the respiratory symptoms of the disease. The largest outbreak of hantavirus pulmonary syndrome occurred in the United States in 1993 in the Four Corners region of the southwestern states of Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Utah. The outbreak resulted in 32 confirmed cases of HPS, with 12 deaths. The outbreak was initially puzzling to public health officials because the virus was previously unknown in the Americas. After extensive investigation, it was determined that the virus was transmitted by deer mice, which were abundant in the area. The mice shed the virus in their urine, feces, and saliva, which can then become airborne and be inhaled by humans. The outbreak led to increased awareness and research into hantavirus and HPS, including efforts to improve surveillance and prevention strategies. Since the 1993 outbreak, there have been sporadic cases of HPS reported in the United States, as well as outbreaks in other countries such as Argentina, Chile, and Brazil. However, the risk of HPS remains low for most people, and taking precautions to avoid contact with rodent-infested areas can help reduce the risk of exposure. There's currently no vaccine available for hantavirus pulmonary syndrome or any of the hantaviruses that can cause the disease. Prevention of HPS primarily involves avoiding contact with rodent-infested areas and taking precautions to reduce the risk of exposure to rodent urine, feces, and saliva. The Rabies Virus Rabies is a viral disease that affects the nervous system and can be fatal if left untreated. The virus is typically transmitted to humans through the saliva of infected animals, most commonly through a bite or scratch. The virus belongs to the Rhabdoviridae family and can infect any mammal, including dogs, cats, bats, and raccoons. In some parts of the world, including Asia and Africa, dogs are the main source of rabies transmission to humans. Rabies virus disease occurs worldwide, with the exception of Antarctica but the risk of infection varies depending on the region. In many developed countries, including the United States, Canada, and much of Europe, vaccination programs for domestic dogs and cats have significantly reduced the incidence of rabies in these animals, and human cases are relatively rare. However, in many developing countries, particularly in Africa and Asia, dogs are the main source of human rabies cases, and the risk of infection is higher especially in rural areas where animal vaccination programs may be limited or non-existent. People who are at increased risk of rabies virus disease include those who work with animals, such as veterinarians, animal control officers, and wildlife biologists. Additionally, travelers to areas where rabies is endemic may be at risk if they come into contact with infected animals. Individuals who spend a lot of time outdoors, such as hikers and campers, may also be at increased risk if they come into contact with wild animals, particularly bats, raccoons, and skunks, 
which are known carriers of the virus. Children may also be at higher risk of rabies exposure because they're more likely to play with animals and may not report bites or scratches to parents or caregivers. The symptoms of rabies virus disease can take several weeks to develop, and early symptoms may be vague and flu-like, making it difficult to diagnose. The incubation period varies from a few days to several years, but in most cases, symptoms develop within three to eight weeks after exposure. The initial symptoms of rabies virus disease may include fever, headache, and weakness or discomfort at the site of the bite or scratch. As the virus spreads to the brain and spinal cord, symptoms may progress to include anxiety, confusion, agitation, and hallucinations. Later, symptoms may include difficulty swallowing, excessive drooling, and paralysis, which can cause difficulty breathing and lead to coma and death. There are two types of rabies virus disease, the furious type, which accounts for about 80% of cases, and the dumb type, which accounts for the remaining 20%. The furious type is characterized by hyperactivity, aggression, and agitation, while the dumb type is characterized by paralysis and lethargy. Once symptoms develop, there's no effective treatment for rabies virus disease, and the disease is almost always fatal. However, post-exposure prophylaxis, which involves a series of injections of rabies vaccine and immunoglobulin, can prevent the onset of symptoms if administered as soon as possible after exposure to the virus. The biggest outbreak of rabies in recent years occurred in India, where the disease is endemic and remains a major public health concern. The World Health Organization reports that more than 95% of rabies-related deaths in humans takes place in Asia and Africa, with India having the greatest rate of these fatalities. There have been a few cases documented of people surviving rabies who did not receive post-exposure prophylaxis, but were put on an experimental treatment known as the Milwaukee Protocol. This involves placing the patient into a medically induced coma and administering antiviral medications directly into the brain. This treatment is highly experimental and has not been successful in most cases. The Ebola virus. A severe, frequently fatal sickness brought on by the Ebola virus is known as Ebola viral disease. The virus belongs to the same family as the Marburg virus, the Filoviridae. The Ebola virus was first identified in 1976 during two simultaneous outbreaks in Sudan and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Since that time, there have been multiple Ebola virus epidemics in Africa with the worst outbreak taking place in West Africa between 2014 and 2016. The Ebola virus is transmitted to humans through close contact with the blood, secretions, organs, or other bodily fluids of infected animals, such as fruit bats, chimpanzees, and gorillas. The virus then spreads through human-to-human -human transmission, primarily through direct contact with the bodily fluids of infected people, such as blood, urine, saliva, and breast milk. The virus can also be transmitted through contact with contaminated services or materials, such as bedding or clothing. The risk of Ebola virus disease is highest for individuals who live in or travel to areas where outbreaks occur. Outbreaks of Ebola virus disease have historically been concentrated in Central and West Africa, including countries such as Guinea, Liberia, Sierra Leone, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. However, the risk of EVD is not limited to these regions and can occur in any area where the virus is present. Individuals who work with or handle animals that may carry this virus, such as fruit bats, monkeys, and apes, are also at increased risk of infection. Additionally, healthcare workers who care for patients with Ebola virus disease or handle specimens from infected patients are at increased risk of exposure to the virus. During outbreaks, the risk of EVD can be higher for family members and close contacts of infected individuals. Funerals and burial practices that involve direct contact with the body of an infected person can also increase the risk of transmission. Ebola virus disease can cause a range of symptoms, from mild to severe. The early symptoms of EVD can be similar to those of other viral illnesses, such as influenza or malaria, and may include fever, fatigue, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, and loss of appetite. These symptoms can develop two to 21 days after exposure to the virus, although the average time from infection to symptom onset is eight to 10 days. The Ebola virus targets many different parts of the body, including the liver, kidneys, and immune system. 
as the virus replicates and spreads throughout the body. It can damage these organs and impair their function. This can lead to a range of complications, including liver failure, kidney failure, and bleeding disorders. People who die from EVD usually do so as a result of multiple organ failure and shock, which can occur as the disease progresses. In some cases, people with EVD may experience bleeding from the nose, mouth, or other parts of the body, such as the gastrointestinal tract. This bleeding occurs because the Ebola virus can damage the cells that line blood vessels, leading to leakage of blood into surrounding tissues. This can result in a condition called disseminated intravascular coagulation, which can cause excessive bleeding and clotting. Not everyone who is infected with the Ebola virus will develop symptoms, and the severity of symptoms can vary from person to person. Some people may only experience mild symptoms or no symptoms at all, while others may become severely ill. The largest outbreak of Ebola virus disease in history occurred in West Africa between 2014 and 2016. The outbreak started in Guinea in December 2013 and quickly spread to neighboring Liberia and Sierra Leone, becoming the first outbreak of EVD to occur in this region. The outbreak was unprecedented in its scale and impact, with a total of 28,616 confirmed, probable and suspected cases and 11,310 deaths reported across the three countries. The outbreak also spread to several other countries, including Nigeria, Mali, Senegal, Spain, Italy, and the United States, although the number of cases in these countries was relatively small. The West African Ebola outbreak highlighted the need for improved preparedness and response to outbreaks of emerging infectious diseases. Since the outbreak, there have been efforts to improve surveillance, early detection, and response to outbreaks, as well as the development of vaccines and treatments for Ebola virus disease. There are vaccines for the Ebola virus disease that have been developed and are currently available. The first Ebola vaccine, called RVSV Zibov, was developed by the Public Health Agency of Canada and licensed to Merck and Company Incorporated. It was approved for use by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration in December 2019. The RVSV Zibov vaccine has been shown to be highly effective in preventing EVD in clinical trials conducted during the 2014 to 2016 West African Ebola outbreak. In addition to this vaccine, several other Ebola vaccines are currently being developed and tested, including a two-dose vaccine developed by Johnson & Johnson and a vaccine developed by the Russian Gamaleya Research Institute. The development of Ebola vaccines is a major step forward in the fight against this deadly disease, as it provides an important tool for preventing and controlling outbreaks. The widespread deployment of these vaccines, along with other public health measures such as early detection and isolation of cases, contact tracing, and infection control, can help to prevent the spread of the Ebola virus and reduce the impact of outbreaks. The Zika virus. The Zika virus is a mosquito-borne virus that was first identified in the Zika forest of Uganda in 1947. It's primarily spread to people by the bites of infested Aedes mosquitoes, though it can also be passed from mother to fetus during pregnancy, through sexual contact, and through blood transfusions. The Zika virus can occur in tropical and subtropical regions of the world, particularly in areas with a high concentration of Aedes mosquitoes, some of the countries that have reported Zika outbreaks include Brazil, Colombia, El Salvador, French Guiana, Haiti, Honduras, Martinique, Mexico, Panama, Paraguay, Puerto Rico, Suriname, the United States, and many others. Anyone living or traveling to areas with Zika virus transmission is at risk of contracting the disease. However, pregnant women and their fetuses are at a higher risk of developing complications from Zika infection such as microcephaly and other birth defects. It's important to note that Zika virus transmission can also occur through sexual contact with an infected partner. So individuals who have a partner who has traveled to an area with Zika transmission or who has been diagnosed with Zika should take precautions to prevent transmission. Additionally, individuals with weakened immune systems, such as those with HIV AIDS, may be at an increased risk of complications from Zika infection. The symptoms of Zika virus disease can vary from person to person, and some individuals may not experience any symptoms at all. In those who develop symptoms, 
They are usually mild and can last for a few days to a week. Fever, headache, rash, muscle soreness, joint discomfort, and conjunctivitis are some of the most typical signs of the Zika virus sickness. The fever associated with Zika is usually low-grade and may not be present in all cases. The rash is typically a flat or raised red rash that may be itchy and is often accompanied by small bumps. The joint pain associated with this virus typically affects the hands and feet and can continue for several weeks. Muscle pain can be mild to severe and may last for several days. Conjunctivitis, or red eyes, is usually not painful, but can be accompanied by itching and discharge. It's important to note that the symptoms of Zika virus disease can be similar to those of other mosquito-borne illnesses, such as dengue fever and chikungunya, so laboratory testing is often needed to confirm a diagnosis. Pregnant women who have gone to regions where Zika is spreading or who have been exposed to the virus should get medical help since the virus can cause major complications during pregnancy. The biggest outbreak of the Zika virus occurred in Brazil in 2015 to 2016. The outbreak began in the northeastern region of the country and quickly spread to other parts of Brazil and neighboring countries. It's estimated that between 440,000 and 1.3 million people were infected with the Zika virus during the outbreak in Brazil. The outbreak was particularly concerning because of the link between Zika infection during pregnancy and the development of microcephaly and other birth defects in babies. Brazil reported a significant increase in the number of cases of microcephaly during the outbreak, which led to the World Health Organization declaring a public health emergency of international concern in February 2016. Since the 2015-2016 outbreak, Zika virus transmission has continued to occur in Brazil and other parts of the world, although at lower levels than during the peak of the outbreak. Researchers are working on developing a vaccine to protect against the virus, and several vaccine candidates were being tested in clinical trials. The development of a vaccine for the Zika virus is considered a priority by global health organizations because of the potential for serious complications, particularly in pregnant women. In the meantime, the best way to prevent Zika virus infection is to avoid mosquito bites in areas with Zika transmission. Use mosquito repellents, wear covering clothing, and use screens or nets to prevent mosquitoes from entering living areas. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to watch all the other interesting videos on our channel.